Look, I don't have any ball or boner jokes for you guys today, but what I do have is a warhead. So I'm going to eat this and see if I can still do the intro. Bottoms up. Oh. Okay. Last time. Ooh. We did SMGs that were very small. Today we're doing SMGs that are very big. Oh, and we're going to be getting them polyatomic. Jeez. It's starting to die down. It actually tastes pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this really quick. So I'm not speaking with balls in my mouth. All right. Just finished it. Honestly, not bad. Pretty good. Uh, not sponsored, by the way. Just had some leftover Christmas candy and I thought it'd be fun. Anyways, to get these SMGs polyatomic, we need to get 25 headshots for each of them. And we have four left to do. Technically five, but one of them's bugged. I'll talk about it in a second. But for our little gimmick today, I went ahead and tried to make these SMGs as large as possible while having the most range as possible. And for all the tuning on these, I have like aim walking speed and like damage range all boosted. Sometimes it's recoil steadiness. Just anything that can increase the range on these guns, I tuned it all the way to that side. And for some of these, like rear grips and magazines, it doesn't really make the gun longer. Same with like lasers. I guess maybe if you count the actual laser going out as making it longer, it does. But I went ahead and added some ammunition to this as well because we can increase the bullet velocity and damage range on that which is completely useless because we're going to be playing on shipment. And I went ahead and I chose the same optic for all of them. It's a six times scope, which is thermal. And I'm going to go ahead and switch this to flinch resistance over aim down sight speed. And we have our eye distance as far away as possible from it. Anyways, just in case you want to follow along at home, this is my MX-9. This is my Vetsniv 9K. Here's our FSS Hurricane. This doesn't really have too many large optics, so I try to throw on the biggest one I could find. And this is our mini back. The one SMG I'm leaving out today is my PDSW. This is the build I would have went with if I could do it, but unfortunately my camos for this are bugged and it's been stuck at one out of 10 ever since I've done the gun. I even played a few games before recording to see. Oh, wait, what? That's so weird. It says I have one three kills without dying with this gun, which has never progressed past that point. But now it says I have two long shots with it as well. So maybe I do have it done and it just doesn't show or it won't let me equip it. I mean, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things because I can still go for Wait, what? I can just equip polyatomic on this? I'm so, I, I'm so confused. Whatever. I guess we have this done and it just doesn't show it, but that's beside the point. Uh, this is the class we're going to be using for all my guns. I'm dumbfounded right now. I don't know what to say, but uh, let's go ahead, hop in and start unlocking some camos. All right. First gun we're going with today is the MX-9 and just look how absurd this scope is. Hold on. Quick little inspect of the gun so you can see the whole profile of it. But this scope is ridiculous. I don't know what it is in this game. I like how the thermal looks like optically, like literally just looking at it. I like how it looks, but I don't think the thermals really perform how a thermal should in a in a COD game. It just looks really weird. Maybe I should throw on smokes here to show you guys, but sometimes people just don't even show up on it. And I don't even think it's like a, a cold blooded or like ghost thing happening. I think the, the thermals weren't really thought through very well in this. And there's like a really weird thing where while you're scoping in as the end game thing pops up, you know that how it puts like the, the like victory or defeat thing over and it shows like the score, the thermal color completely changes on it. And it looks like what a, a more traditional thermal and like COD games have looked like. It's just really weird. And I wonder if it was like a bug or if they kind of just switch directions on it or maybe like the filter over it kind of just changes it to look different. I don't know. I, I'm spitballing here. I guess I'll, I'll just show you guys towards the end of the game. I need to start focusing on getting some headshots. We currently have none. I think, nope, that's not even one. Cool. Oh, that's one. That could have been another, but I whiffed really bad. Ooh, what? Where else am I shooting if not his head? Headshots in this game have made the least amount of sense to me. I've gotten like headshots, like I've seen the headshot thing pop up and I've seen camos pop up from me not even getting a headshot with it. And then I've gotten blatant headshots where I see every bullet hit them in the head and then it just doesn't even count. It feels like this game don't even know what a headshot is. Like, look at this. This is thermal right here. Through the smoke, couldn't barely even see anybody. Couldn't even see anybody. I think it only works through like player put down smokes and not smokes from like or the smoke from like a grenade blowing up or a, a cruise missile hitting like that while the cruise missile smokes up we try to look through it see i can see the dots over their head but i can't see those players at all and they can see me perfectly fine because all the smoke is uh, like i think it's player base like it's on its client side and not server side is what i mean by that 
Uh oh, and we got a riot shield over here. I'm not dealing with it. Let's take a little crack off a little crack. There we go. I love how every time I do crack in this game, it works. Why is this guy not moving? What is this guy? Oh, he was shooting the whole time. He got that kill too. Him standing there just perplexed me. Who just does that? Who stops fighting to stand still? I guess it worked, but like never seen that before in my life. That was bot behavior. NPC move. Now there's one gun in this video that I unfortunately had to leave out being the vector because we used the vector in the last video. The vector can get like insanely small, but also there's a blueprint for it where it's basically a sniper. And I, I saw some people recommend that when I was asking about like, what, what should we do with the rest of our SMGs in our last video? So it's unfortunate we have to leave the vector out since we have it already complete. But uh, it kind of goes to show you the Vector is kind of a grower. Because the Vector can be one of the smallest SMGs and one of the, like the longest SMGs. So there's hope out for you guys still. For my, my small wiener kings. But it ain't about the size of the Vector. It's about the KD of the gun. I don't know. I try to make up a saying for it on the spot. Okay, here we go. Look at look at the scope. You see how it's a completely different color? You can see all different gradients on it. Kind of weird. All right, we got like barely any headshots in our last game. We need to fix that. I think we immediately just got one. I almost got two there. I thought I collided him. What the hell is this? What's the point of a thermal? I can't see anything. I know I'm doing this to myself, but the thermals in this game really need to be fixed. You literally see the, the red markers over their head before you even see them outlined in the scope for its sole purpose. The C thermal activity this makes no sense but what also doesn't make any sense is how youtube can't stop any sort of bot problem on their website at all i, I was looking through the comments the other day like while i was looking for uh any suggestions from you guys of what we should do next with the smgs but i've been seeing like an increasing amount of like replies to comments from bots saying like oh uh, dm me on telegram with like somebody using my profile picture saying like oh you want a giveaway I, I am not on Telegram. I've never been on Telegram. I've never used it. If you ever see something from a comment replying to you of somebody claiming to be me, if there's no check mark next to it and the at isn't at jmoney26, it's fake. It's a bot. It's a scam. Uh, do not do anything they say. Don't click on any links. Do not message them. It's all a scam them trying to get something from you and i i've blocked these bots multiple times i've banned them from the channel i've reported them and every single time they come back uh back when we were streaming a lot more frequently we'd have this problem a lot with like it'd be like get cam girl now at blah 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 dot com and they'd come in and just spam a bunch of emotes because like they would do phrases and i would just ban those phrases so they would learn and come back with just emotes and have you read their name that's really stupid. I don't know what YouTube's problem is with bots and why they can't do anything about it, but I, I can't ban them all. I, I've tried. Every time I ban them, they just come back. They're like roaches. So if you ever see comments like that, just reply to it or something saying that it's fake and like just report it. That's all we can really do. So I'm, I'm sorry about that. No way you have last stand. What? Who uses that? Stop it. Oh, and he's got a fucking launcher, too. What the fuck is the point? That's ridiculous. If somebody with, is using a thermal on you and you just, like, throw a grenade at them or something or near them, you get such an advantage over them. This game is so backwards, man. Let's have a little crack. I, I've come to realize that the, the battle rage kind of works like a stim. Like, if you don't have a stim but you have battle rage ready... You can kind of just hit the battle rage and they work pretty similarly. Kind of clutch. I don't, I'm not really one to use a whole lot of field upgrades in this game. It, it, like every time I just normally run dead silence and I either just forget about it or like die the second I activate it. But I think with battle rage, I'm going to be using it a lot more. Oh, and there we go. Our 25 headshots with the MX-9 are done. Let's go ahead and switch on to our vets nev. Somebody kill me right now. Except you. Or you. Or you. You know, I'm just going to go off with a throwing knife. All right, thank you. They had to take me out. Oh, this is what our vets nev is looking like. Let me get out of the brightest light ever. Scope is almost bigger than the gun. But well, let's see how this does trying to get us some headshots. Ooh, immediate one. Go ahead, stand up. What are you scared of? Oh my lanta. The amount of times I've downed this guy with last stand is crazy. How can he even use last stand and be sane on shipment? The amount of times I die on shipment, I die like 60 plus times a game sometimes. 
I'm going down probably like, I don't know, 40 of those times, since it takes a while to get that last damn perk unlocked, I'd be losing my shit just laying down. Maybe he's still getting like more, a few kills without dying with his RPG or whatever from just like reviving himself. So maybe it's worth it like camo wise, but it would not be worth it mentally for me. I'd be like spamming the respawn button. Like I'm surprised the F on my keyboard's not worn out from the amount of times I hit it. Like the second I die, I'm hitting that button until I can move again. Oh, eat that, you little bitch. That's what you get for trying to take cover from me. Oh, we are slaying the headshots right now. Popping the hell off. We just need a few more of these and we'll be done with this gun. There we go. Add another one down. The game's seen how much I've been getting my ass kicked and now it's trying to help me out. There we go. Well, these guys are kind of just getting dominated. I think our team's just popping off right now. It's cool to be on the other side of it. See how the other side lives for a bit. Come on. We're like, gotta be two away. We've gotten way too many headshots this game to still be using this gun. Is that it? Are we done? Yes, let's go. I have like camo sense. There's game sense and then there's camo sense. And that's what I got. And now we got to work on like the least appealing one. I really like the hurricane in the beta. I still think it's a pretty decent gun, but this is like the worst for this challenge. But let's see how the hurricane does. Ooh, this sucks. This is awful. Okay, never mind. We got a headshot immediately. I'll take those all day. Just keep them coming. Or don't. Whatever. Whatever floats your boat, COD. So now you guys know what time it is. It's the, the gamer guy talks about sports, mainly football segment of the video. But before I get into uh, like some line stuff I wanted to talk about, uh, there's some pretty serious stuff that happened tonight on Monday Night Football. Uh, it's a few hours after uh, the incident, so I don't have any of the updated information if there is any that comes out like after this video. But during the Bills Bengals game, there was uh, the Bills safety, Damar Hamlin. Got a pretty serious injury. It looked like just a routine play. Like he made a tackle and he stood up and he kind of just fell back over. It, it was a really scary situation. He was on the field, down on the ground, getting CPR for nine minutes and then having to be like taken to the hospital. They, they even canceled the entire game because of it, which I don't blame them at all. Uh, if I was any of those players and I just saw my teammate try to be like resuscitated on the field for almost 10 whole minutes, I would not want to play either. And it would just look very bad on the NFL's part to be like, all right, come on, guys, get it together. Let's play a game. I know your friend almost just died or whatever is going on with him. But uh, yeah, we, we got ratings to keep. We got sponsors to pay. Go ahead and suit back up. So I, I think it's good on the NFL to postpone that game to cancel it for the night. It's a very scary situation. A, a lot of people did not know what was going on for the longest time. And I, my condolences are, are with him and his family and T Higgins I think was the one with the ball when that happened and I know he's probably feeling a lot of guilt for it even though it's not his fault so thoughts go out to those people hope everything's better soon and hope he's doing all right but well, the thing I wanted to talk about is that the Lions have their first primetime game of the season coming up this Sunday their game was flexed into Sunday night football against the Packers because this game could have playoff implications for both teams. Uh, like I mentioned last time, I won't get too into it, but uh, we need the the Lions need the Rams to beat the Seahawks in order for the Lions to get into the playoffs if they beat the Packers. And the, for the Packers to get in the playoffs, they just need to beat the Lions. So assuming the game beforehand, the early, I think it's like a 4 p.m. game for the, the Seahawks Rams. Assuming that the Rams win that and the playoffs are on the line, it's going to be Lions, Packers, you know, high stakes game. It's going to be pretty cool to see the Lions playing in primetime. Usually we don't really get too many primetime games because we haven't been very good up until this year and like the, the latter half of this year. So it's cool to see, you know, the Lions get a little bit of recognition. But one thing that happened, I, I mentioned before that I, I like watching the Pat McAfee show. I watch it all the time while I'm like editing because it's really long form content. And it it's like the perfect thing to watch while I'm editing. It's all just dudes shooting the shit talking about football. But apparently Pat McAfee and the Lions now have some sort of beef, or at least how I'm interpreting it. I could be like misreading the entire situation. And this is going to sound like really stupid to a lot of you guys that don't even follow anything. So I'm going to try to like simplify it. So they, they have people call into the show all the time. They'll have like former players, they'll have current players, they'll have coaches, GMs, like 
analysts, insiders, like they they have people calling all the time and talk about like whatever. It doesn't even necessarily need to be football. Well, I saw on Twitter today that Pat McAfee, the, the host of the show, was like tweeting at the Lions like, let me pull up the tweet so I'm not paraphrasing and I'll, I'll get into it once we get into the next game. All right, so the tweet was, hey, at Lions, I respect your move from denying our request for MCDC, which is the nickname he coined for the Lions coach to come on the show this week. I feel like because of at Evan Foxy, which is one of the guys on the show that is a Lions fan, we're the only one of the non-Detroit shows in the history of microphones and cameras and stuff that chat about the Lions regularly. Good luck Sunday. To me, this seems like pretty passive aggressive, like somebody not coming on your show. So you just immediately don't like them. I, I mean, I didn't know the whole discourse what happened between him and like the Lions PR team. I don't know anything about the Lions PR team. They seem to be working with a lot of people like they just did the whole ninja collab uh they've had the coach on the sh they've had the lions coach on the show just two weeks ago so i feel like it's still a, a relationship that was happening like they could still communicate with them and have him on the show but maybe just because it's like a big game this week he didn't want to come on or something or maybe like the pr team was rude to him or in some way i don't know but they didn't have a show or anything today for me to even watch and get some context behind it. I think they're going to have one tomorrow where they're having on Aaron Rodgers, which is the quarterback of the Packers, the team the Lions are playing. So I feel like there's going to be a whole lot of Lions slander coming from it. Seems pretty passive aggressive to even like say anything like that. Maybe I'm completely misreading it, like I said again. But in tweets following that, someone said, I don't see the point in tweeting this. They have a big game coming up. Maybe they're bunkering down like most teams do when the season's on the line. And he's like, just a heads up for our listeners. Also, bunker down, you're referring to peewee football. You think the NFL, you go into a hole before a big game? Trying to make it an MCD's DC's media schedule this week. And it's like some gif of like some guy like sarcastically like nodding his head, which I don't get at all. I feel like this happens a lot where they have a big game coming up and they'll only do like required media for the NFL. Like everyone's seen the whole clip of Marshawn Lynch saying like, oh, I'm just here so I don't get fined. Like they have required media they have to do and going on like other people's shows and stuff is completely like optional. They're just doing it uh, either because they like the show, they like the people, they want to do more media, whatever. But this is like one of the biggest games for the Lions in the past. Past, I don't know, decade. We don't really get too many big games. And now that we're we're doing well, I think he wanted to like hunker down and focus. And for some reason, he took like offense to this, to them not like jumping to the, for the option to be on his show, which I, I will not deny. It is a huge show. He's done a lot for sports media, especially here on the YouTube scene. He's really like blown it up and made it into what it is now. So I, I, I can't disrespect any of his accomplishments, anything what he's done. And I think he's one of the most like brilliant people on a microphone in terms of like how he speaks, how he can tie things together and how he can just speak for long periods of time. As someone else that does shit on a microphone for a living, it's incredible to see what he can do. But I, I just think this reeks of entitlement of I, I don't even know what it just it just seems weird to me because I really do like the show and they, they say like they talk about the Lions a lot and I guess they talk about them a pretty decent amount but it's never really in like too much of a flattering light I can't speak to like how they actually feel about like the Lions and our coach and the city of Detroit but every time they talk about it it always kind of seems like it's oh, it's backhanded like nobody wants to go to Detroit our our quarterback sucks or this that the other and then it, it seemed like he was just looking for a way to bash him again or kind of rile up more of a Green Bay fan base because he does have that relationship with Aaron Rodgers I don't know like I said, I'm probably just reading into it too much, but it was just really weird to see somebody I watch regularly have beef with like my favorite like team. Anyways, football rant over. Ooh, how are we not done with this gun yet? There he is. Okay, as soon as I say something, and I said, there we is, but I'm pretty sure we're done. I didn't see the full pop-up come up. I saw the little metal. So I'm just gonna assume that we can move on to our next gun. Okay, quick double headshot to start before I can even inspect it. But this one looks so ridiculous. This is such like uh, ingrained in my mind as like a very close range SMG with just a ass load of ammo. So seeing it with like a big thermal scope on it with like a long barrel and suppressor just looks silly to me. But it seems to be working pretty well. We've already gotten a few headshots with this. What's going on, fellas? Oh, please hit a shot. No way I got an assist on a guy that was standing right next to me. That's embarrassing. But this thing is a headshot machine. Headshot machine. 
pretty sure that's from like Counter-Strike, an old Counter-Strike interview or something. I just pulled that from the, the depths of my brain. I used to play like a whole lot of CSGO and I'd be like very involved in watching like random shit to do with it. Everything outside of like tournaments and interviews. And there's got to be somebody that just pronounced headshot machine that way. And I don't remember who it is, but the way he said it has stuck in my mind for all these years. We are just annihilating the headshots on this. This is going to be fast. There we go. Pretty sure we already have at least 15 headshots for this. Like, not even joking. We're about to get a whole lot more right here. Okay, maybe just one while well, I burn to death. Go away, fire. <laughs> okay, well, I, I couldn't blow the bullet away. There's only 6.1 seconds left in this game and I'm trying my damnedest to keep it going so I can get a buzzer beater. I wanna get a buzzer beater polyatomic on this. Nobody's even on it. I don't blame them. This is shipment. Who plays objective on shipment? We had 71 kills that game. We were dusting. So out of that game, we got 21 headshots with this. We just need four more and we're done with all of our SMGs. Except for our PDSW, which technically does have polyatomic, but I don't know what the hell's going on. Because I don't think that polyatomic counts towards the polyatomics for Orion. I think it just lets me equip it out of pity. Okay, let's hope that last game was not a fluke and we can still get headshots with this. Ooh, damn. Every time I peek somebody, I'm dying immediately. Okay, there's a headshot. There's another one. There's two more. And we can get out of this. I can already tell this game's gonna be a sweat fest, so I wanna be done. Get the hell out of the way. I don't care if you gotta reload. Get the fuck out of my way. I am not patient enough to wait for you. Please move. I am so sick of body blocking this game. There we go. I think we just need one more headshot. There we go. Is that it? Show me it. Go ahead. Yeah. All right, I'm out of here. So that's Polyatomic on the MX-9, the Vetsnev, the Hurricane, and do we have it on here or did it glitch out? Oh no, we're chilling. All right, let's hop in game and see what they look like there. All right, I'll just run through these really quick. This is what our MX-9 looks like, all polyed out with long boy style. This is our Vetsnev 9K, pretty sick. This is our FSS Hurricane, the most disappointing one of the bunch. This is our mini back or mini back. Or, or PP Bison, whatever you want to call it. I wish it was still called the PP Bison. That way we could have long PP, but they took that away from us. Never forget. And just for fun, this is our PDSW. Mainly showing it because I think this one would probably look the best for a thumbnail, even though we didn't really use it today. But that's not my fault. The gun didn't want to work and it already kind of just gave me polyatomic. So what do you want me to do? And there you have it. You can see I have both experience handling small and long things in my hands. I can do it all. I'm a jack of all trades, but that's where I'm gonna end today's video. I really appreciate you guys watching and supporting. It really means the most to me. And I will see you guys in the next one. Later.